Hi, this is Margaret from dataminingdna.com. This video is about using the GEDmatch site to compare your DNA kit to a collection of archaic samples of DNA pulled from fossils that have been found across the world. And those samples include Neanderthal samples. I was inspired to put this video together and a, some companion articles by a friend of mine who tested with Ancestry and then was disappointed to realize that Ancestry does not show anything to do with Neanderthal DNA. It's its rival 23andMe, which has an estimate of how much Neanderthal DNA that you have. And I wanted to show her that she could, she could do a little bit of a comparison between her DNA, her modern DNA, and the DNA of these archaic samples both that represent both Neanderthal peoples and other specimens. If you're wondering about this little picture, I went looking for a picture of a caveman, and it was seemed to me to be very pertinent because he's scratching his head, probably confused, and I'm convinced that two seconds before this, he was looking at Jedmatch. It's not the easiest set of tools to work with, so that's why I'm doing this walkthrough, step by step, follow, follow through, and you'll be able to look at your DNA matches with Neanderthals and a whole range of other archaic DNA samples. It's, it's really interesting. I got a fair bit of background on the current thinking with Neanderthal DNA and how much Neanderthal DNA do modern humans have. And if I jump down to how to investigate, I've got a step by step here. Now this step by step in this article is how to download your DNA and upload it into GEDmatch. I'm now going to forget about Ancestry completely. This video applies to any sourced d DNA that you've got onto GEDmatch. So I'm sitting here on the GEDmatch homepage and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the DNA applications and I'm looking for this menu item here, the archaic DNA matches. And I'm just going to grab my DNA kit here because GEDmatch never remembers it and I will just open this in a new tab and here we go. So this is the archaic DNA matches comparison and what this is going to do when you enter your kit number it is going to compare your kit, your DNA kit with the full collection of uploaded samples. These were provided by Felix Emanuel on the website of Felix Emanuel if you follow through on this ancient DNA page and I'll just open that in a new tab. It doesn't actually go straight to the ancient DNA page. It goes through a set of tools and he has multiple interests. So we'll stick with the genetic genealogy and we will go into this page, which is the ancient DNA results. And here, this is where you get a full list of the samples. So right up here at the top is the Altai Neanderthal sample. And that is the remains of a woman of partial remains of a woman found in the Altai Mountains. That is a Neanderthal sample. Right below her is the Denisovan sample. That's quite interesting. The Denisovan sample, I've got a little bit of info here about the Denisovans. Not quite Neanderthal, a related but separate subspecies or distinct species. It's still under debate. And then we have many other samples. So the Clovis sample, that is of particular interest to Native Americans. And you'll find lots of fascinating articles if you look up Clovis Anzic. And as we come down, so we've got the Neanderthal samples that are 50,000 years old. Then we have much younger samples. And these are dotted across Europe, Russia, Scandinavia. We come down to these, again in the name, they have Neanderthal. Okay, so that is the full list. And it's useful to keep that handy because when you see what you get with Jetmatch. Let's get to work. The first thing I recommend that you do when you're coming here for the first time is that you don't use the default threshold here which is set at the incredibly low 0.5 centimorgan. I go into that, into my second companion article, I go into the consequences and the implications of working with centimorgans at this tiny, tiny level. We are at risk of that we are matching the DNA by chance. Go into that further in my article and what the other possibilities are, but I'll just plow on straight on with actually looking at this stuff. What I suggest is that you set it to a higher level and work your way down and find the highest threshold at which you start getting matches with these archaic samples. I'm going to set it to 5 centimorgan and work my way down. Do I get a match? Yeah, no matching segments. Try a lower threshold. Back we go. I'll drop down to 4. 
So if I go down now to 3 centimorgan, I am now going to start getting matches. What you see are these bars, these are the tiny segments at which the analysis is showing shared DNA. So then the oldest one here, which is a, a sample that was found near a village of Ostisham, which is within Omsk in Siberia, is 45,000 years old. So just to clarify on the display here, the first bit of text, that is just, that's a kit number. That is a Jedmatch kit number that is unique to Jedmatch. Uh, they all start with F, F for Felix, and you can see they're just going up in numeric range. The next piece, whether it's Ust Isham or whether it's IR1 or CO1, this is the name of the sample provided by the scientific community. And that's what you can do your internet searches on when you're looking at more background. And when I too Ustisham into uh, an internet search, I was getting scientific articles, wiki pages and blogs about this particular sample. Really interesting stuff. I mean, you can fall down a rabbit hole and spend an entire evening on any given sample. And I can see that I match on the eighth chromosome and I think even tinier little matches on the 15th and the 17th. Now, one of the things I noticed, and you can see it here, is that suddenly at three centimorgans up comes Altai Neanderthal. Now, this is why <laughs> this is why Felix's list is useful, yeah, because the Jed match list is it's not showing you the entire name here. But Altai Neanderthal and the Denisovan sample is showing for me, but visually I can't see any bars. And when I scroll down, if I take chromosome 1, I scroll down, yeah, there's the heat map. And all of these seem to be due to the Siberian match and this European match, Hungary match. So I'm not sure why this is showing up here. And it didn't show up on the 5 centimorgans. Because I'm also not sure if this seems to me to be a shorter list. I didn't count. There was a few on Felix's list that I didn't find. Yeah, I come down to these ones. These Neanderthal samples on Felix's list. What's that? VI. 33.16 and SID 1253, they're not on this list. So I can't tell you what's going on here because I couldn't find any supporting documentation to explain it to me. And if I go back to the little header shot that I show, that's a caveman coming out going, what the heck? I'm dealing, I've been dealing with Jedmatch and I don't understand what's going on. I'm going to drop down now to 2 centimorgan. Two centimorgan, and I'm getting more European matches, as I, I might expect, as I bring it down and down. So if I drop down again to one centimorgan, and now you see it starts lighting up. And at this point, we're down to one centimorgan, and you don't say, well, we're matching here because I'm a modern human, and I am, of course, I'm going to share DNA with these archaic humans, and this is what this represents. I suppose what becomes interesting then is looking at where it lights up and where it doesn't and looking at the combination of region and era. I also want to point out, was it this, yeah. So at this point, there's my Altai Neanderthal match here. And here is where I'm seeing our matches. I see two small segments of matching DNA. And then beneath Altai is the Denisovan sample. On the, interestingly, on the same chromosome in the same place, but not up here. And if I work my way down, now we're getting down into the weeds. Well, I'm going to drop then right down to 0 0.5 centimorgan, which after all was the default set setting. And the reason why I didn't want you to start with this is because you're looking at this going, what the heck? <laughs> and down at 0 0.5 centimorgan, it's, you know, can you d drive meaning from this? But once again, I'm not seeing, I think, these matches. What confuses me is Altai was appearing with no segments, as was Denisova, and then they kick in at a certain level, it was 3 centimorgan. I dropped right down to 0.5 centimorgan, and I'm still not seeing these samples. Now, is that because I don't share any DNA with these samples? And do you see these samples on your display? Like, why am not I seeing an empty row with these for these samples when I saw an empty row for Altai at a higher level? Or is it that these samples have been have fallen out, have been taken away? I mean, if there was any instructions or documentation here, that might be helpful. But this, this is me right now, yeah. Just emerging from the cave of Jedmatch, scratching my head. Okay. And oh, by the way, this is this is an image. You can't 
search this list. Uh, you can't copy this list. So when you're actually doing your internet searches, you just have to type in, you know, what, Hinkston-3. Okay, so we've covered using the archaic DNA matching tool. I'm going to quickly show you a second tool to do a one-on-one -on -one comparison with individual samples. We've done this piece, how to use the archaic DNA matching tool at GEDmatch, and now I'm going to walk through using the GEDmatch one-to-one -one DNA comparison. And the one-to-one -one autosomal comparison, one of the free tools, it takes any two kits. The first one is going to be my own, and then the second one is going to be one of the archaic DNA kits. And those are these kit numbers here. So the first part of the label is the kit number. One of the things that you'll find at this point is that you can't actually just copy and paste because this is an image. The other thing I should say is that you are going to have to bring down the segment size from the default of seven. But the lowest segment size you can use is three centimorgan. This is my archaic matches run at three centimorgan. And as you can see, I don't personally have the Altai Neanderthal sample or the Denisovan sample to work with at three centimorgan level. What I do have is this Ostitium Siberian 45,000 year old sample. That's the one that I'm going to use. So I'm just going to type the Ostitium numbers F, four nines, and then we are at, as I squint at the screen, 35. I'll just bring that off screen. And now I will go over to the one-to-one -one comparison and I will put in this second kit number. Got to fill this in. I'm going to give it the minimum, which is three, because I won't see anything if I leave it at the, the default, which is seven centimorgan. And I'm going to leave everything else and I'm going to click compare. What I do here is I just scroll down until I find, there we go, chromosome number eight. And this is telling me the size is 3.2 centimorgan, and it's giving me the start and end position. And I think I have another segment on a different chromosome. Yes. So chromosome number 15 is 3.1 centimorgan. So that's about as far as I can go with this, because I don't have a huge amount of matches turning up at the 3 centimorgan level. What does it tell me? It's just an interesting exercise. I said in the article that it's it's fascinating and fun. These are these, you know, archaic fossilized remains found across the world. The fact that we can do this exercise at all in itself, I find intrinsically fascinating. Okay, I'll have links in the description below on the two companion articles. I hope that helps. If you do have insights, and if you can actually answer a couple of questions that I posed in this video as to what I was looking at, then please do drop a comment below. And best of luck with your research.